In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of Jesus be in your heart and on your lips. I want to begin this reflection, my brothers and sisters, by sharing with you how confident I am in you that you can do that which Jesus asks of you. And my confidence is rooted in Jesus because of who he is. He is God. He is Lord. And so if he asks you to do something, it's because you can do it, because he's given you the power to obey his commandments. This reflection comes from the Holy Gospel according to St. John chapter 15, verses 12 to 17. But before I share with you these few verses and just break that open a little bit for you, just a word about St. John. So St. John, during the Last Supper, um, rested his head upon our Lord's most sacred heart. St. John was the only apostle that was faithful to Jesus to the end. He stood beneath the cross and witnessed the depths of our Lord's suffering and our Lord's death. And then St. John, together with St. Peter and St. Mary Magdalene, was among the, the first of the uh, disciples, the apostles, to encounter the risen Jesus. So if there's anybody that can give us an insight to what all of this is about, um, it's St. John, who was such a faithful friend of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Another thing is the Holy Gospel, according to St. John chapter 13 through 17, it's known as the Last Supper Discourse. This is when Jesus sits down with his friends and he just opens up his heart and he talks and he shares. And so in these holy days, as we get ready to enter into Holy Week, just really want to encourage you to seek refuge, seek light, seek strength, seek wisdom in the Holy Gospel according to St. John chapter 13 through 17. So let me read with uh, to you the little passage I'm going to meditate on from the Gospel of St. John chapter 15, verses 12 to 17. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the father will give you whatever you ask in my, him in my name. I am giving you these commands, so that you may love one another. So what jumps to the surface right away is that what the Lord is asking of you is to love, to love the people he's placed in your life. But the second part of it is actually where we're going to start, as he has loved you. So quite simply, the first thing Jesus is asking of you is to allow him to love you. Jesus so desires to live in friendship with you, and it's the nature of friendship that friends live together and they share one another's lives. So when we go back to our school of prayer, those two key elements of there being a structure to our relationship with the Lord, to our conversation with God, morning, afternoon, and evening, that's that basic minimum structure. But then also in the moment, turning to Jesus, saying, Lord, please be with me. If you're married, Jesus, show me ways to show love and honor to my spouse. Um, if you have children, Jesus, what are you asking of me today for my children? If you are a child, Jesus, help me to be a loving and obedient child. Jesus, help me to honor my parents. It's inviting Jesus into those relationships and to the ordinary moments of our day where we get better and better at recognizing his presence and we get better and better at seeing and believing how much he loves us. And the more you and I allow Jesus to love us, the more loving, the more kind, and the more generous we're going to become. When I'm in the kitchen and I'm getting ready to cook, I don't stand there for 15 minutes praying Hail Marys before I start to cook. The prayer I say takes five seconds. Jesus, please be with me. And I tell you, the more that you do this, the more you're going to recognize the presence and the love of Jesus in your life, how good, how kind, how patient and loving he is. And that's going to help you to become more loving. 
my brothers and sisters, I know you can do this. I know you can obey the Lord. May God keep you and may God love you.